Leviticus 8 and 20. This tying into some of the stuff, but that to make it where that video won't be extra long. You know what I'm saying? Some of the stuff we gonna hit, and I might just preach it more than us precepting and reading it. So, ain't that something I already had that ready? Well, not a little bit under. It. Make it eighteen. And he brought a ram for the burnt offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram, and he killed it. And Moses sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about. And he cut the ram into pieces, and Moses burnt the head and the pieces and the fat. And he washed the inwards of the legs in water. And Moses burnt the whole ram, the whole what? The whole ram upon the altar. It was a burnt sacrifice for a sweet savor. And an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah as Moses as, as, as Yahuwah commanded Moses. So again, what do we see? Yahusha was burnt whole on the altar for a sweet smelling savor. So we need to turn around and see that we need to become one with that same ram to be offered whole. That means when we sit back and we look at offering whole, look at Mark chapter 12, verse 28. Hold it, Leviticus 8. Look at this mean when it say being offered whole. I mean, you ain't holding nothing back. You're giving your whole self to him. He say, it, you offer yourself as a living sacrifice. That is your reasonable service. You know, the thing to sit back and we be doing, we be holding stuff back. You're not offering yourself whole. You know what I'm saying? These are spiritual sacrifices acceptable to, 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 to Elohim by Yahusha HaMashiach. So if you're going to offer upon the altar, offer yourself whole. Stop being partial. Stop wanting to hold back the leg or the head or the arm. You know what I'm saying? Get a whole thing up. Excuse me. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he answered them well, asked him, what is, which is the first commandment of all? Yahusha answered him, the first of all the commandments is here, O Yasharal, Yahuwah Elohim is one Yahuwah. And thou shalt love Yahuwah thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Come on back to Leviticus chapter. Ain't that offering yourself whole? Mm -hmm. Ain't that's what the master did? Mm -hmm. That's why he was a sweet smelling savor when he offered himself to Elohim. That's the same way when he said, when Isaac said, that's the Vincent which my soul, my son smell of the earth which Yahuwah have blessed. He took it, that sweet aroma, that sweet incense, offer yourself whole. Verse 22, and he brought the other ram. Hold on, the other ram. Guess what type of ram this is? The ram of consecration. What is consecration? Didn't we already read in Hebrew 10 where it said he talking about that he sanctified, he consecrated us to the veil, that is to say his flesh. And Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram, and he slew it. He slew it. And Moses took of the blood of it and put it upon the tip of Aaron's right ear and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot. And he brought Aaron's sons, and Moses put the blood upon the tip of their right ear, and upon the thumbs of their right hands, and upon the great toes of their feet. And Moses sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about. Now why would this man take a ram that is set apart and take the blood of that ram and put it on a man's ear, hand, and foot? That is correct, sir. Absolutely. Let's look at Leviticus 14. All three of them. Where was that stick you just you just read about the piercing? I ain't reading nothing about no piercing. How about the blood, the blood on the phone? Yeah, on the phone. That's Leviticus 8 and 20, 20 to about 22 somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Leviticus 14 and 18, I want to say. He's actually going to tell you this twice. 
See, this came to Troy because I was talking about that leprosy. But I want you to sit back and see the difference, right? He said blood, right? Mm -hmm. Leviticus 14, though. Make it 12. Leviticus 14 and 12. Now, you know what this Leviticus 14 is about? Leprosy. Leprosy is a disease of the flesh, right? Mm -hmm. Leprosy is synonymous with what? Oh. What's the byproduct of sin? Yeah. Death. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall take one he lamb. One who? And offer him for a what? A trespass offering. And a log of oil. And wave them for a wave offering before Yahuwah. He shall slay the lamb in the place where he shall kill the sin offering and burnt offering in the Kadesh place. Where was the master slave? In Jerusalem, the Kadesh place. I want you to read verse 1 of this chapter so they can hear on tape what they're talking about. Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, This shall be the Torah of the leper in the day of his cleansing, when he shall be brought unto the priest. So this is what should happen to the... Let's look at leper in Leviticus 14 and 1. Let's make it plain. That's why I paid to know the law. Leper is, hold on. Let me, let me try to pronounce it right. Sarah. It's to be diseased of the skin. Get 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's see what the disease of the skin is. And get Ecclesiastes chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 15 and 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Elohim. Neither doth corruption inherit incorru incorrupt to corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye. What was that twinkling of an eye? You remember that? That was Moses sticking his hand in his bosom, right? Came out leprous. In a twinkling of an eye, it changed back, showing you that you would be changed from death to life in a twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised and corruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Why do you think he had Moses do that to show Pharaoh you're going to be swallowed up in victory? And how did Pharaoh get swallowed up in victory? The Red Sea swallowed him up. Come on back to Leviticus 14. Where we start there? About verse 14. Make it to 13. I ain't finished all the verse. And he shall slay the lamb in the place where he shall kill the sin offering and the burnt offering in the Kadesh place. For as the sin offering is the priest, so is the trespass offering. It is most Kadesh. Now guess what, right? He said we are kingdom of kings and priests, right? The master, so that would make the father a priest too, right? You know how that would make the father a priest? Because the people should seek the law at his mouth. Did he not come down on the mount and exit the 20 and give him the law? They sought the law at his mouth. Because what did the people say when he gave it to them? I don't want to talk to him. So the trespass offering and the sin offering was the father's because the son belonged to me. And guess what that means? When you offer yourself and you become one in his death and be a partaker, because he said once a man been once he offered himself, there remains no more offering for sin. Because Mashiach is your sinner. Remember, we read that in, in Hebrews 10, right? Because basically this is just a continuation. But when somebody come back and see this, they're not going to see that this is basically a continuation. It just separated two different matters. The same matter just got broke up in two parts. You know what I'm saying? But they don't have two different names, though. This video ain't going to be named the same one or the other one with name. But it's all really a continuation because all this stuff tying it together. Ain't it? Mm -hmm. 
Ain't nothing separate. Because it got for why? Same word. Same teaching. Tell the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. That's all he did. He told you what he did at the beginning in the second half of the book and told you what he was going to do at the end in the first half of the book. Verse 14. And the priests shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering. And the priest shall put it upon the tip of the right ear, ear of him that is to be cleansed. He will take the blood and put it on the right ear of him that is to be cleansed. And upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot. And the priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it into the palm of his own left hand. And the priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand. And shall sprinkle of the oil with his finger seven times before Yahuwah. And the rest of the oil that is in his hand shall the priest put upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed. And upon the thumb of his right hand. And upon the great toe of his right foot. And upon the blood of the trespass offering. And the remnant of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall pour it upon the head of him that is to be cleansed. And the priest shall make atonement for him before Yahuwah. Now I know I mentioned that Ecclesiastes 12, but I ain't read it. But you know it says what? Dust you are, and dust you shall return. So guess what that water got to do? Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. Because he said all this stuff is to cleanse the leper, right? Mm -hmm. Let's look at it. Then you notice that he said he put the blood where? He put the blood in the oil where? Ear, hand, foot. So we know it, we already know it, right? If the blood is on the tip of the right finger, you know this is what? They pierce my hands and my feet, right? He said, your, your name is engraven upon the palms of my hands. I'll never forget you. We know he said they set a print for me on my heels in Job, right? They caused me to possess the iniquities of my youth. What are the iniquities of his youth? The iniquities of Adam. You know what I'm saying? Say nobody didn't sin like unto the similar to Adam. Adam was a figure of like it was to come. Like I say, y'all know, I just said book and everything I just said. Mm -hmm. If you know the book, you know where it's at. Because I just told you something in Psalms. I just told you something in Job. I forget the last thing I just said. I just told you something in Romans. You know what I'm saying? Say I want to get to you to get to the point where, of course we'll call it. And when you said something about Adam, you think about Micah in the ancient days and Daniel. Well, it's something that Micah would say, I, I, and, and, but it's not what you think about. Mm -hmm. But there's a part of Micah, I want to say chapter 5 or 6, it's actually 6, where he talk about possessing the iniquities from the beginning. Go look at it, Micah chapter 6. What, what I'm saying is what I want y'all to get, that he does of Elohim hear Elohim words. So I shouldn't necessarily have to say sometimes if I'm just preaching, you should already know. You may not say, oh, that's Job 13, 27. But I know that the book of Job, though. You still 1 Peter 3, right? Yeah, we're going to get to 3 and 17. But look at this, Micah chapter 6. That's all I'm sitting back looking at. To sit back and be like, is you sitting there and be like, man, I don't know what that nigga talking about. Is he just talking? No, that's the word. Some of y'all should be at the point where you should know the word when you hear it. That man say those who got the word that the, the word flow out of them like, like water. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see. It ain't chapter 6. It might be chapter 4. It is chapter 4. It's been a while since I looked at the verse, so I'm trying to remember. No, it ain't chapter 4. Might be chapter six. I know it's in Michael what I'm thinking about, but I don't want to quote it wrong before we read it. It's been a while. You know that's a bad right there. You don't look that something you can't even remember. See in Michael six seven. No, it's definitely not that. It's something else. It's something. It's something that's referring strictly to Adam. And I know it when I see it. Yeah, it's referring strictly to Adam. I remember when I preached about it, but I can't recall where it's at at this present time. And I know it was in Micah. But I can't recall what verse it is. 
No, it's definitely not six. I know what I'm thinking about, and it ain't six and seven. I know what I'm thinking about. I can't. And it's the the words is in my head, but the verse is not in my head. You know what I'm saying? What's the words? No, I'll sit back. It, like the whole chapter is just only bits and pieces of it because it's been so long. You know, like two, three words? No. no. Well, don't worry about it. It'll come to me, man, most high with it. Yeah, trying to remember. It was definitely about uh, possessing something from the beginning. Yeah, but it ain't coming right now. So we'll go, go on ahead of that first Peter 3 and 17 while I'm sitting there I'm trying to think what that was, man. It was something in here about Adam, man. I think I did this about almost two years ago. And it's escaping me right now. Yeah, y'all hiding it for the moment. It's probably not even Michael that I'm thinking about either. But it was definitely something about Adam. I remember pulling this out. Well, I'm to cheat. Maybe against the seven shepherds, with Nimrod. That ain't it, man. That is not it, man. It ain't it. I don't worry about it. First Peter 3 and 17. They were basically talking about setting up that authority and that rule like it was in the beginning. See, see it was Micah 7, 18 and 20. No, it ain't that. It's definitely not that. I know what it's saying. That's not it. It's something to stand out that when you see it, or at least if I, when I look at it, I know like that's Adam. I know what 7, 18 through 20 say. That's talking about the coming of the master. That ain't it. Y'all will. It'll come another day. I ain't finna stress myself about it. 1 Peter 3 and 17. For it, be better, for it is better if the will of Elohim be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. For Mashiach also have once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to Elohim. Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Ruach. Do you see how he say he poured that oil on the head and in the ear and on the hand? That was to cleanse the leper, to make you clean, right? Make you alive, right? Because he said, you are clean from the word that I've spoken unto you. By which also he went and preached unto the Ruachs in prison, which were sometime were disobedient, once the long-suffering Elohim waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure, wherein to even immersion, doth also now save us, not putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of good conscience towards Elohim by the resurrection of Yahushua HaMashiach. This is how the leper going to get cleansed, right? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. When we sit back and you look at it, right? If the blood of Yahushua is on your hand, you know what? What do you do with your hands? No, I'm talking about what do you do with your hands? What's the main thing a man do with his hand? What's the main thing people say a man should do with his hand? So if the blood of Yahushua is on your hand, on your on your right finger mm -hmm. and that's talking about doing the work the yard right the hand mm -hmm. and if the blood is on your big toe then guess what that point to the wall the way and then if the blood is in your ear then what because he said that the word of Yahuwah is they it's a reproach under them they don't delight their ears uncircumcised they cannot hear so guess what that means when the blood is in your ear, he to have an ear to hear, let him hear. Remember we were talking about that those that are Elohim, hears Elohim word, and the blood of Yahushua is in your ear, then you'll hear. And if his blood is on your hand, then you're going to word. And if his blood is on your feet, then you're going to walk. And what is it tied to? Drink. This is my blood. Sprinkled upon the altar seven times. The seven abominations that he fell in. So you ain't got no business swearing falsely. That's why that wrath going to be dropped on you sevenfold. 